Have you ever tried jelly gouache? I have not. So let's do it today. Jelly gouache. It's fun to say. This right here is the Mia jelly gouache. Mia, Mia. I got the big one, real big. And let me just say, I have seen a lot of artists here on YouTube try this. Ray, Chloe, and Mira. Yay for YouTube art trends. I am super late, but it's still gonna be fun regardless. Without further ado, I think it's time to open the jelly gouache. Ready? Oh, it's supposed to be a smooth spin, like a top. In this container, there are 56 different colors of jelly gouache. Ow! I try to open things gracefully and it backfires. Oh, cute! There is this color chart. I'm still gonna swatch them though. They look like little barbecue packets or Chick-fil-A sauces. The wolf creature in the middle looks like he's an outcast and everyone's staring at him. How do I even grab one? Each of these little containers here has 30 milliliters of jelly gouache paint inside. <laughs> Thumbnail gone wrong. Also, no! This is ridiculous. Stay there. I cannot wait to swatch these tomorrow. I'm back. We're about to open all 56 paints. Starting with this one in the corner. Okay. Ooh. It looks like black barbecue sauce. These are stuck. I could very easily edit this footage to look extremely satisfying, you know, no problems, everything ran so smoothly, but I feel like I wanna be really transparent with you all and share the cons of the prep, which is not that bad, but as you can see, some of them are a little bit more difficult to open than others. Maybe the glue is just a little bit stronger on some of the containers, I don't know. That was extremely unsatisfying. There, that one was super easy. The trick is you have to take it out before. Okay, there we go. This one is called Arts Green. Another one that's hard to open. I can't even grip it. Figuring out which corner to open was a mystery. Sometimes I had to try all four of them before I would find the one that peeled off more easily than the others. Wait, there it is. I found the corner. Pretty. As you can see, the paint looks like it has separated during the shipping process. And I don't think that it would be a good idea to just dip my paintbrush right in. I think they all need to be mixed so that liquid gets combined with the bulk of the paint and it looks more smooth. So that's what I am doing here. And I even was really extra with it. I didn't want to waste the paint. So I used a second palette knife to scrape the paint off the other palette knife. And yeah, wow, it was a process. This part probably took me about two hours, but hey, now I have nice and smooth buttery paints. It's ready! I may seem overly excited, however, 
It took over three hours to prep all these. I hope this doesn't come across as a negative thing. I just wanna be super transparent with you and let you know that if you aren't aware, there's a lot of prep work that comes into this palette. Hopefully I can use this for years to come. 30 milliliters will actually last quite a long time because this little tube here is just under 30 milliliters, it's 22. And this one here is 60. It's about half of this, so there's an ounce in each little container. I'm gonna use my unicorn paintbrush. I got this set from Target a long time ago, there's a few more. Let's go ahead and dip in to the Burnt Umber. It definitely does feel more jelly than a normal acrylic. That's cool. Ooh. This is so opaque. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Before I continue the swatches, I wanted to give myself a little bit more space to work. So let's bust out the little mini robot vacuum. Now it is finally time to swatch. Yes. At this point, I was just so done with all the prep work that I didn't even measure my canvas. So the swatches do not look even. They are not nicely placed, but I did the best that I could without measuring. It turned out like this. It doesn't have to be a work of art. It is just a reference. So I can see what all the colors actually look like when they're dry. In the top corner, you can see that there is one paint that is a little bit more translucent than the others. This is because I added water to the dark blue. You can barely tell it's blue. So I just wanted to kind of remind myself that if you add water to these, they will change drastically. At least the darker ones, the lighter ones will not have as much contrast. I am finally on to the artwork portion, something that I hardly ever do, which is people. More specifically, I'm going to paint a self-portrait from this selfie that I have on my phone. To be quite honest, it really scares me. It makes me nervous. It makes me feel like I am inadequate and I'm like, can I actually do this? It, it makes me doubt myself and my artistic abilities. So I had to face that fear. You gotta keep on going No matter what I say I want to show you something really special about gouache that you cannot achieve with acrylic paint. So I'm doing this little demo with the foil and you can see that there's dried paint on every single foil that I have ripped off. After applying water, it reactivates the gouache so it has the same properties as watercolor. And that means that if your paint does happen to dry up, you can revive it. If you take a really long time to paint like I do, I don't recommend keeping your palette open the 
entire time, I would tell you go ahead and put the lid on as much as you possibly can because it does start to get a little bit goopy. But if you do run into this problem, just go ahead and add a little bit of water. I use my paintbrush to just flick drops, but you can use a spray bottle, of course, and that would be really easy. Then put the lid back on, let it sit overnight, and your paint should be really refreshed. Here's the same test with acrylic paint, and as you can see, when I add water, nothing. Nothing happens, it just stays there, and any little tiny bit of pink that you're seeing is probably just because I didn't clean my brush enough from the gouache, so it does not transfer. That being said, there are both pros and cons to painting with gouache in comparison to acrylic, in comparison to watercolor. Personally, I find it a lot easier to blend with gouache than it is with acrylic because the layers underneath reactivate and it helps to get that really nice gradient. However, that can also be a huge problem because if you reactivate the previous layers, you can really, really, really mess up details that you have already put down. So it's kind of a trade-off. I personally think it's easier for me. It was hard to get used to at first, but I don't think I could have achieved the same blending with acrylic or it may have taken me a lot longer. If you're interested, by the way, in seeing some of my other painting videos, I'll link some in the description box below along with the iCard up in the corner. Now, here's what I have finished so far with the painting. Unfortunately, I decided to be a little bit selfish and not finish the painting. This is as far as I got so far. I spent a minimum of six hours and I probably will spend at least, at least six more hours finishing this, but I want to do it at my own pace so I actually enjoy it and I don't want to mess it up. So I will show it in a future video. Maybe I'll do a comparison where I make a self-portrait with acrylic and watercolor, Posca's, we'll see. If you have any ideas on how I can kind of do a part two, but not really make it a part two, kind of make it a different idea, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that you all have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back very soon with another video here on SoCraftastic. Bye! special gouache dance. For tonight, I am signing off. Goodbye.